Welcome to the CBS Radio Mystery Theater Archives. The only YouTube channel which has the original classic episodes of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater in order with no ads. Thank you for listening. And now, enjoy the show. CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall, your guide through the macabre maze of the occult. Love, hatred, and revenge are accepted by us as part of our daily lives. But those who claim to know the spirit world assure us that these emotions don't necessarily die with the death of a mortal, but are sometimes carried over into the hereafter. Our tale deals with love, hatred, and a revenge that reached from beyond the grave and made a mockery of the marriage vow till death do us part. Honestly, Jack, do you think Vinny will come along with us on our honeymoon, too? Now, Anne, don't talk like a fool. Vinny is dead. Forget him. He won't let us. Your dear, dead twin brother just won't let us alone, and it doesn't seem to bother you any more than it did when he was alive and tagged along on all our dates. Jack, I can't live with a ghost. All right, Anne. What do you want me to do? Kill him? You know as well as I that Vinny's already dead. Just make him stay that way, Jack. Just make Vinny stay dead. Our mystery drama, An Identical Murder, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Murray Burnett and stars William Redfield and Elliot Reed. I'll be back shortly with Act One. That thin line between love and hate has been walked by tellers of tales ever since tales have been told. For other storytellers, the line between life and death became a thoroughfare on which they balanced fascinating tales of terror. Today, we cross both lines, love and hate, life and death, as our path leads us to the ultimate unknown terror. Our guide along this path is a man named Harry Carlson, who is more experienced climbing mountains than dealing with the unknown. Let's set the record straight from the start. I'm not a man who sees things. I'm a guy with both feet on the ground, my head on straight. And darn well better be because my hobby is mountain climbing. And the icy face of a mountain is no place for a guy with jumpy nerves. The funny thing about what I have to tell you is that this whole bizarre adventure started with a climb. A climb I made with the Benton twins. I remember the three of us sitting in the warm tap room of the Regenhof talking about the climb. Harry, the map shows we shouldn't have too much trouble after we reach this point, about halfway up the north face. Right, Vinny. Tough part should come when we leave the trail. Uh, I'm Jack. He's Benny. <laughs> you keep mixing us up. <laughs> Wouldn't you think I'd be able to tell you apart after the last four years? Well, Harry, uh, why should you be different than everyone else? People have been calling Jack, Vinny, and me Jack ever since I can remember. Well, I'd love to talk more with you guys about people mistaking you for one another, but I think we're prepared for tomorrow's climb and... I'd better hit the sack. I'm just a lonely young lady looking for a date. I, uh, Anyone interested? And what are you doing in Switzerland? Annie, darling. Oh, listen, oh, oh. pay no attention to my rude twin brother. I am delighted you're here, Anne. Oh, oh, oh. Vinny. And I know you're Vinny because Jack always says my brother, and you say my twin brother. Uh, uh, and since you're such an observant minx, come here and put your arms around me, and I'll show you just how glad I am to see you. Mm, you've made yourself a dear. Oh, oh. <laughs> Hey, my ribs, Jack. Leave me my ribs. 
I'll need them for the slopes tomorrow. Oh, what's this about slopes? I don't know how you got here, but now that you're here, there'll be no skiing. You're climbing with us tomorrow. Please don't take this personally, but I have no head for heights. I'm all right on skis, but climbing is out. If everyone knew their own limitations, there'd be a lot fewer accidents. Well, good night. We'll meet here tomorrow bright and early. Yeah, that seems like a good idea for all of us. Oh, what do you say, Jack? Uh, if you don't mind, Vinny, there's something I want to discuss with Jack. Oh? Private? Sort of. Well, now, Anne, you ought to know by now that Jack and I have no secrets from each other. He'll, he'll only tell me anyway. Perhaps, Vinny, that's exactly what I want. Oh, it's beautiful up here, Jack. Just beautiful. And so are you. Jack. Jack, please stop kissing me or I'll want to elope tonight. Oh, what's wrong with that? Vinny. Oh. From the conversation back in the tap room, I gather you hadn't told him about us yet. That's right. Are you going to tell him? You know I am. It, it, it's just... Well, you know how Vinny feels about you, and he is my twin brother. <sighs> and don't I know it. What's that supposed to mean? That I love you, not Vinny. That I want to live with you, not Vinny. And? That it may be hard for even me to tell you apart physically, but there's a world of difference between you. I'm in love with you, Jack. And Vinny had better be told, and soon. So that's why you've come. You traveled 4,000 miles to pick a fight. Oh, not really. My boss sent me to Paris to check on some designs, and I was so close I... Well, I wanted to see you. And I was right. You still hadn't told Vinny about us. And it, it isn't easy. Vinny loves you, too. But it's you I'm marrying. Y you really don't understand how close Vinny and I are. It, it, it's something... Well, being twins... I, I can't explain it. That's been the story of our entire courtship. Wherever we went, there went Vinny also. Sometimes I felt as if I was getting engaged to two men. You never told me you felt this way. I've been thinking this way for a long time, and I'm desperate. An ultimatum? No. I'm too much in love with you, Jack, to give you ultimatums. All I want to know is, am I engaged to two men? If I am, tell me, and I'll see whether I want to be. But tell me, or tell him. Vinny, I have something to tell you. Oh. It's about Anne, isn't it? Uh, I should have guessed you'd know. Mm -hmm. We've always been able to read each other's thoughts. So, aren't you going to congratulate me? Well, you've just lost me. I knew it was about Anne, but where did the uh, congratulations come in? Anne and I are going to be married. You dirty double cuss! Oh, Vinny, what do you do? I behind my back! Vinny, stop it! Stop it! I'll kill you! I ought to kill you! I will kill you! Okay, I'll kill you! Okay, I'm not going to stand here and let you beat me up! You! Now are you going to listen to me? Or do I have to pound your head against the floor? Okay, okay, Jack. Okay, Jack, let me up. I... I'm sorry. I'm sorry I blew my top. Benny, what happened to you? I... I, uh... I honestly don't know, Jack. For a minute, I... Oh, I, I really wanted to kill you. You almost did. Now calm down and let's talk about no, my marriage. No, no, no. The only talking I'm going to do... Is to tell you how sorry I am. I'll make it up to you, Jack. And I'll prove it. With my wedding gift. How are you doing, fellas? We're okay, Harry. Let us let Jack speak for himself, Vinny. There you go again, Harry. I am Jack. And I'm Vinny. And I'm doing okay, too. How far are we from the summit? I'll keep you straight somehow. Just the low man on the line, and Vinny, you're next, right? Right. How far from the summit? Not too far. A couple hundred feet or so. Uh-oh. Trouble? Yeah, a little. Oh, uh, what is it? Start 
back, back down, huh? No, let's give it a try, Harry. Go and take a look at the Traverse. Oh, okay. And watch yourself. Vinny, you hang on to my rope. All right. I'll come on again when I return. Hey, that wind's really rising. You okay, Jack? Fine, Ben. How about you? Well, I'd like it better if we were a little closer together. I... Can you come up a few steps? Why not? Hang on to the rope. Right. Uh, hey, hey, Ben, don't let the rope go slack. I'm having trouble. I, I'm slipping. What? What's that? I can't hear you. Ben, Ben, I can't get a foot on him. I'm slipping. The rope's in me. across the traverse and I heard the scream then the slide my stomach told me what had happened I looked and I saw the one man clinging desperately to the face of the mountain the empty rope dangling from his waist hang on I'm coming to get you hang on I I couldn't help it I tried but he was he was gone before I could get the rope around me to hold him. Don't think about it, Vinny. Just hang on till I reach you. I'm not Vinny. I'm Jack. What? Wasn't Jack below you? I could have sworn that Vinny was where you... Vinny's gone. Dead. And I'll be following him unless you get to me. You can call me anything you want, but whatever you call me, the fact remains that I'm Jack. And Vinny's at the bottom of the mountain. I dreaded going back to the Rangahoff. I didn't know which I feared most. Losing a man for my team, or having to tell Ann Slater that Vinny had plunged to his death. Fortunately, Jack spared me the latter ordeal. But I was put in the middle of a strange and painful scene. The fault was mine, Ann. All mine. Vinny called to me and I pulled on the rope, but it, it slipped, and then, then he was gone. I, oh, I'll never forgive myself. Never. That's the wrong way to think. I haven't heard Ann say it's wrong. In fact, I haven't heard Ann say anything since we came back. I, I don't know what to say. I'm too shocked. Well, that's understandable. Maybe we ought to get a doctor. Oh, no, thanks, Vinny. I, oh, what am I saying? I called you Vinny. Oh, you... of course, of course. Vinny is on your mind and... Oh, and no, I... Jack, don't. Don't hold me. I just want to be alone. Oh. I'm sorry. I'll see you in the morning. It looks as though it's going to be a difficult situation for you, Jack. She'll get over it. She has to. Because she's a girl I love. And I'm going to marry A few months passed. I expected to read the announcement of the wedding between Jack Benton and Ann Slater, but all I heard was that they were seen around town together and no date had been set. Until one day at my office, I looked up and Ann Slater stood there. When she wasn't the vivacious laughing girl I remembered, but a frightened, confused woman on the razor edge of a breakdown. I'm sorry, Harry. I'm really sorry. I, I shouldn't have come, but I... Oh, you don't think I'm crazy, do you? No, no, Ann, sit down. Let me get your drink. You were there. You're the only one I could think of who might be able to... to help. Brandy, coffee. He's dead, isn't he? You were there. Now, Ann, try to get hold of yourself. What is it? That's what Jack keeps telling me. He says it's all in my mind, but I know it isn't. It isn't! Ann... Why did not you start somewhere and explain so that I can understand? It's Jack and Vinny. Vinny? You know how close Jack and Vinny were, but what you couldn't know was that all the time Jack and I were dating, Vinny was along. Well, what does that have to do with this? Heaven help me, but I think we still are. I think we still are a threesome. <laughs> According to medical science, identical twins have the same heartbeat, 
the same skin, hair tones. And if you took a voice print, you would find that although the voice might vary in pitch and timbre, they would follow a somewhat similar pattern. The question is, would a woman be able to tell the difference between identical twins if she loved one of them? I'll return shortly with Act Two. Two's company and three's a crowd. But I'm puzzled about which kind of a third party on a date is more disturbing. A dull and insensitive bore who refuses to take any hints about leaving, or an unseen but definitely felt presence. In other words, a ghost. Anne Slater is trying to explain how she feels about this ghostly third party as we continue with our strange tale. I I feel so, so disloyal. You must remember I'm the one who's supposed to help Jack forget about his brother's unfortunate accident. And it seems I just keep reminding him of it instead. Man, you still haven't made it clear to me just why. Wherever we go, Finney is with us. Well, that's not possible. Finney's dead. I know, I know that, but... Just listen. Last night, we went to the pump room for dinner. Ah, good evening, monsieur, madame. I have your table over here. As you see, monsieur, it's set for four, but I'll have the bus boy remove two place settings, and you will have more room. Oh, thank you, captain. I appreciate that. And, uh, monsieur, may I recommend our special salad? They're all on the table up front. You may serve yourself. Ah, uh, thank you. Thank you. Merci. And then, then the strangest thing happened. Jack and I sat at the table, and you must believe me, we saw the bus boy clear away the other two place settings. We went to the salad table. And when we came back, there was a third setting. Well, that's easily accounted for. Maybe another bus boy started to set up the table for four. Yes. Then tell me how you account for the fact that the third place had a salad plate heaped with Caesar salad. Caesar salad? I remember. That's Vinny's favorite. Well, maybe Jack... We were together at the salad table every minute, and we came back together. What did Jack say? What he always says when this happens. Forget it. Then he isn't as concerned about this as you are. Oh, that's another thing that's bothering me. He's concerned. I know he's concerned, but he won't admit it. Do you think he's trying to act as if everything were normal so as not to upset me? Well, now, don't you think that's a strong possibility? But... There are other possibilities. I don't know what you mean. I hope you will when I tell you what happened a week ago at an amusement park. Oh, look, Jack. Cotton candy. Hmm? I haven't had cotton candy in years. Well, then you'll have a big, giant portion. Uh-oh, no. It's too fattening. Just a small one will be fine. No, no, you'll see, you'll see. Here you are, darling. Oh, thank you, Jack. Oh, I wish I could make your eyes sparkle and your lips smile that way when I'm not bringing you cotton candy. Mmm, delicious, but sticky. And? Mmm? Did you hear what I said? Mmm. And? I'm sorry. Oh, what's wrong? Why can't I make you happy the way I used to? It's my fault. I'm all mixed up. About us? About us and Vinny. And... Look, Vinny's dead. We just have to forget him. He won't let us. He just won't, and you don't seem to understand. Sometimes I think your voice sounds just like Vinny's. That... That maybe I've mistaken you for... Oh. Forgive me, Jack. I just don't know what I'm saying. It's all right, it's all right. Now, look, I've known a lot of girls. You know that. But you're the one I want to marry. Not just for your looks, but for your wonderful sweetness and sensitivity. I know how you must have felt about Vinny always tagging along. It was only natural that when you heard he died, it, at first you... Well, I suppose you were glad. No. Be honest with yourself. Only at first, you were glad that he was out of the way. And because you're feeling guilty about it, you're letting that feeling lead you into imagining all sorts of ridiculous things. You think that could be the explanation? Oh, darling, I'm sure of it. Now, look, let's just forget all about Vinny and enjoy ourselves. Which do you want to try? The slide or the shoot the shoot? Your choice, Jack. You wait right here. I'll get the ticket. But, Jack, I want to... Jack, come back a minute. No! No, no! I won't listen! I heard sweet 
quick, too. Just as if Jack were right beside me. But how could that be if he was off buying tickets? I heard it. I heard it. All right, all right, all right, Anne. All right, now, you thought you heard it. Oh, no one believes me. I'm not sure what it is you want me to believe, Anne. You were also there when it happened, on the mountain. You'd know definitely which one of them fell. Well, I heard the shouts, but I didn't actually see. There's one way we could be sure. One way there'd be no doubt at all. How? Fingerprints. If the body could be recovered. No chance. Not at least until the spring thawed. But then... That still wouldn't explain the strange happenings. Maybe not. But can't you see that I'm terrified I'm marrying the wrong man? If I knew which one had died on the mountain, at least I'd be sure about the man I'm supposed to marry. I'm coming. Jack! Hi. Didn't you get my note? Oh, you bet I did. That's why I'm here. All right, now, what's this about your taking a trip? I said it in the note. I just have to get away for a while and think. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Where are you going? I didn't tell you because I didn't want you to know. Anne, Anne, what's happened to us? That's what I'm going to go and try and figure out. Look, you're not going. What? I mean it, not without me. I love you. I love you more than life itself. Jack, that's very sweet. But if you do love me, you're going to have to let me get away for a short while to get my head straight. Why, what have I done to you? I'm afraid I've done it to myself, Jack. It's not you. All right, I... Well, look, may I have a cup of coffee? It will have to be instant because I don't want to miss my plane. Okay, instant, instant. (laughs) Lucky I left the kettle out. I've put most of my other pots and pans away. Look, if it's too much trouble, don't bother. It will only take a minute. No. Oh, no. Please, God, no. Yes! Yes! Anne, Anne, what is it? What is it? What's the matter? You've been sitting in that chair all the time, haven't you? Well, uh, yes, of course. I mean, you didn't come into the kitchen, did you? Well, darling, I told you I've been here. Now, Anne, what is it? What happened? Nothing. I, I just got frightened. Oh, darling, darling, come on, tell me. I heard you whistling Sweet Sue. You thought... Sweet Sue? Well, why should that get you so upset? As a matter of fact, I was. Uh, no, uh, but I heard it close up in the kitchen with me. Oh, you see, I'm worried about your being alone. The kettle. I'll get your coffee. All right. Look, at least let me drive you to the airport, will you? Please forgive me, but I have to finish packing. <laughs> Here's your coffee. All right. Um... What about the airport? Let me think about it while I pack. Three valises? How long are you thinking of staying? Until I feel I can handle the situation. Uh, you can close the one on the love seat. All right. Uh, is it all right if I uh, put my coffee on the night table? Be my guest. Your guest. I'd rather be your husband. Oh, love. When are we going to get married? Hmm? I always forget my toothbrush. No, there it is. Look, Anne, did you hear my question? I heard. Well? Let's go back into the living room. All right. What about the other police? I'll leave it. I may have some last-minute things. <laughs> now what? Look on the table. Right there, on the table. What? You, you mean the, the coffee cup sitting there? And the lighted cigarette. I don't smoke. And you haven't lit a cigarette since you came in. Now I know I brought only one cup in from the kitchen and you left it on the night table in the bedroom, so how can now, you... Now, Anne, calm down, please. Now you know why I'm going away. And you also know why I may never come back. I just can't go on like this, Jack. I can't. <laughs> You know where she went, and you're going to tell me. I have no idea where Anne is. I tell you, I've got to find her. Now, Jack, I'm not much on giving advice, but Anne's a big girl. I imagine if she wanted you to know where she was, she'd let you know. 
Harry, tell me this. Did you and Anne talk about that day on the mountain? I've already told you. I think you should ask Anne about our conversation. Oh. Now, look, Jack. I got a lot of work to do, so if you don't mind... Yeah, I get I... it. You're kicking me out, aren't you, Harry? Oh, please, Jack. I... What's that? Who's... I was looking at you, and suddenly I heard... Your phone, Harry. Huh? Oh, yeah, 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 excuse me. Hello? What? But how did it happen? Where is she? It's Anne. What's happened? Hold it, Jack. Ha- uh, skiing accident. Yeah, I see. Yes. Yes, yes, I'll take care of it. Oh, no, it was about Anne, wasn't it? Yes. She's in a skiing accident. But oh. she's all right. She asked the hospital to call me. All right, all right. What hospital? Where? Jack, she called me. Harry, it was sweet of you to come. They uh, tell me I should be out in a few days. Well, what happened? Jack has told me so many times you're an expert skier. What happened really had nothing to do with skiing. It was... It was eerie. I was all alone at the top of the run. It was a beautiful day. And I was just about ready to push off when I heard... I heard... I looked around, but I was alone. And then... And then I heard someone whistling. I panicked. I dug my poles in and took off. But the sound followed me. I knew I was going too fast, but I just wanted to get away from the sound. I wanted to go faster than all those awful sounds. But I couldn't. And then... Well, I... I never even saw the tree I hit. Mm Mm-hmm. And... I have something to tell you. When that call came from the hospital, Jack was with me in my office. He knows about your accident. Oh, well, I don't suppose I could have kept it a secret. Anne, Anne, are you all right? I got here as fast as I could. I should never have let you go alone. Hello, Harry. Anne, please, are you all right? Jack, Jack, I will be in a few days. The doctor says it isn't serious, just a mild concussion. But, Jack, you shouldn't have come. Oh, that's where you're wrong. Not only am I here, but I'm going to stay until you get well, and then we're going to get married immediately. Jack, don't you understand that the reason I went away was because I wasn't sure about... Well, I'm sure. Darling, I'm sure you need me, and from now on you'll be with me, and I'll be here to solve all your problems. Having the man you love by your side in times of trouble can be a great comfort. But it also can be greatly disturbing if you're not sure whether the man by your side isn't the wrong man, the wrong twin, and perhaps even a murderer. We'll be back shortly with a resolution of our Anne's Dilemma. Menage à trois means a household made up of three people. Usually, two men and a woman. But the three can be any combination that medical science and the new sexual freedom can devise. In our story, Anne Slater, one week before her marriage to Jack Benton, was deeply worried about a possible menage à trois. But her concern was that the third person in her menage was a ghost. Harry Carlson, the best man, was also worried. I certainly didn't relish the idea of Jack Benton asking me to be his best man, but my guilt over the death of his twin brother left me no choice. And so, three days before the wedding, I found myself Jack's guest at a charming cottage by the sea that he and his brother had inherited. It was here that he had decided to spend their honeymoon. Now, we were alone that first night, just Jack and me. Well, I'm sure glad you could make it, Harry. There's no one in the world I'd rather have as my best man, except, of course, Vinny. (laughs) Thank you for the compliment. Who's upstairs? Hmm? Well, you're the only guest. 
Yeah, but there's somebody up there. Surely you can hear the footsteps. <laughs> there's no one there. Oh, you must be putting me on, Jack. I tell you, there's no one. Now, don't tell me you don't hear those steps. Must be someone making them. Okay, if you want, you can look for yourself. That's exactly what I'm going to do. Hello? Who's there? Let's not play games. I'm Harry Carlson. There's someone in the bedroom? Hello? Hello? Jack? You up here? Jack, what the devil's going on? The next day, when Ann called and asked to see me privately, I knew what it was about. And I dreaded the meeting. But there was no way out. I met her, as she asked, at a little restaurant overlooking the sea. We can't look at the ocean, but this table's far enough away from everyone so that we'll have some privacy. How are you, Ann? You look completely recovered. Mm, physically, I'm just fine, but mentally, Harry, I just have to find out if I'm going crazy or... You spend a night with Jack in the beach house, and I want to know if... If I heard anything strange. Yes. Whenever I'm with Jack, I... I don't know how exactly to describe it. There's always a feeling of another person. A presence. Someone else there. Did you feel that, too? You're not crazy, Anne. Oh, thank heaven. You felt it, too. Harry, I think you saved me. From what, Anne? Sometimes I'm absolutely sure that the man I'm going to marry isn't Jack, but Vinny. Now I know what I have to do. I'm going to call the wedding off. I thought it was supposed to be bad luck if the bridegroom saw the bride before the wedding. I think it's only on the same day or... Something like that. Uh, and alone here in your room at the motel, what will people say? What will people say when they hear that there's not going to be a wedding? <laughs> you know, I've always loved your sense of humor. Until now. I'm not joking. No, you're not. I don't mean I won't marry you. I will just as soon as you level with me. Don't you see I can't go into a marriage with a man who just laughs off something that's terribly important to me? Anne, please, that I'm not doing that. I simply don't know what you're talking about. When you do, maybe we can go ahead. Okay, okay, all right, all right. I have been lying to you. Oh, Jack. But why? Why did you lie? Because, darling, I didn't want to worry you. I, I, I thought... Vinny would go away. Then it is. Vinny, or his ghost. You wanted the truth, didn't you? Yes. Then you're going to have to be able to face it. You knew, of course, that Vinny was in love with you. I knew. I mean, I won't pretend that I can explain it, but we were identical twins. You must remember how sometimes we didn't even have to talk because we knew what each of us was thinking. I remember. Sometimes it drove me crazy. Well, somehow, now, I don't know how. Vinny is still with us. I, I, I feel him at, at times so strongly that it, I've even started talking to him. Then you're saying that Vinny is a... is a... A ghost. But look, there are ways of getting rid of ghosts. You mean something like exorcism? Whatever you call it, there are people, mediums, who get through to the other world. What makes you think Vinny can be made to leave us alone? And I'm telling you, I'm sure he'll do it. Out of his love for you. I know that was genuine. But how would I go about it? I, I don't know anything about the spirit world. I made some inquiries. I have the name of a reputable medium. No phony. And I've spoken to him, and he's agreed to help. You spoke to him about me? Yes. And he feels exactly as I do. That Vinny's ghost will be more apt to listen to a plea from you. <laughs> This is your first visit to a medium? That's right. Mm-hmm. Uh, let me explain briefly what may happen. I will go into a deep trance, and I will call to him and ask him to talk with you. If you hear him, you may answer him, but otherwise you must keep quiet. 
Huh? All right. Vincent Benton. Vincent Benton. The one you loved on Earth is here. You know her, Vincent Benton. The girl named Anne Slater. She wants to talk with you. Are you there? He's here. Vincent Benton, listen. I speak for Anne Slater and your brother Jack. Stop that. You have no reason for anger. Listen to us. Your actions are making Anne Slater and your twin brother Jack very unhappy. You must realize that you will only have peace when you give them peace. You must understand that your peace and their happiness lies in their marriage. Stop! 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 Let go of me! You're, you're hurting me! Stop! Let go! I, I must get back to the sphere where I belong. Let, let me go! I'm not one of you! Are you all right? What happened? Uh, uh, I'm sorry. I cannot help you. I don't believe anyone can. We contacted a malignant, a very evil spirit. And it's best that you leave immediately. And the wedding took place just as planned. As I followed Jack and Anne up the aisle, I felt the hair on the back of my neck stand up. I looked around. Everything seemed perfectly normal until Jack took Anne's hand. Oh, your hand's like ice, Jack. Harry, do you have the ring? I handed Jack the ring. And suddenly my blood ran cold. Because very faintly, I heard it. I knew that Anne had heard it too, because I saw her lips tighten. But her hand was steady as the ring went on her finger. And then it was over. And they were man and wife. At the reception after the ceremony, I was only counting the minutes until the last guest left, and I could also decently leave. Nothing more had happened, but I still desperately wanted to get away. After what seemed an interminable length of time, only Anne, Jack, and I were left. I took Anne aside to offer my good wishes. Thank you, Harry. Thank you. I owe you a lot. Oh, you don't owe me a thing. It's just... Uh, you sure everything's going to be all right? You heard the whistling at the ceremony, too. Don't worry. Jack and I have made up our minds. We'll be fine. Yes. Yes, I'm sure you will be. I'll just go back to the cottage, pack my bag, and clear out. Uh, this is going to sound silly, but Jack and I decided we wanted to be in the cottage alone for the next few hours. Well, of course, I understand. What time should I drop by? Well, half an hour or so. Jack and I are walking back along the beach. <laughs> I don't ask you to believe what happened next. I only tell you what I saw with my own eyes. As I stood on the steps of the church and watched them walk on the wooden planks that had been laid along the beach to form a crude boardwalk. Their backs were to me. And Jack's arm was around Anne's waist. When suddenly... I'll swear there were two arms around her waist. And one of them was encased in ice. Why is it suddenly so cold? I think... I think the wind has come up. I don't feel any wind, but... Jack, I'm freezing. Let's walk faster. Darling, I... I can't. Uh, look, you... You run on ahead and... And light a fire, will you? I'll, uh, I'll be along in a minute. Don't be long. I won't. Jack, please let me go. I really tried. I tried to throw you the rope. Look. Believe me. You know Anne would never have married me. I had to take your place. 
Sounds better for Anne. Oh, please, Jack. Let me live. Please. Go back to being dead. As I watched, the arm encased in ice grew to a whole man, who with his icy arm locked around the bridegroom's shoulders, led him inexorably off the planks and across the sand and into the sea, where they both disappeared from view. As Harry Carlson told us, you don't have to believe it. But I have to report that the bridegroom's body was washed ashore on the following day. Coroner's finding? Death by drowning. There was, however, no explanation offered as to why the new bridegroom had suddenly decided to go swimming by himself with his clothes on. I'll be back shortly. Castor and Pollux, the heavenly twins fixed and immutable in the sky, made a bargain with Zeus. When one died before the other, they were to be together always. Only they were to spend six months in heaven and six months in hell. I like to think that the Benton twins made the same deal to be together. But what troubles me is which twin belonged in heaven and which in hell. Our cast included Elliot Reed, William Redfield, Roberta Maxwell, and Robert Dryden. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. It was a long wait. The pendulum swings in its gentle arc. I can feel her presence coming closer, closer. Feel myself floating back into that special world of peace and beauty. Her back is turned to me as I call, and she turns. But it is no longer Wanda's face, I see. It's the face of the slovenly, mocking little witch I have taken into my house. Bad enough she invades my waking life. I will not let her spoil what few dreams I have left. Old instincts explode, and I reach towards her, ready to strangle her for daring daring to try to take Wanda's place. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Uncle Ben's Long Grain and Wild Rice. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. Join us at the CBS Radio Network.